Good afternoon. I call this business meeting to order. Today, the committee will consider three bills, S-465, Bridging Agency Data Gaps and Ensuring Safety Badges for Native Communities Act, S-2908, Indian Buffalo Management Act, and S-4370, Tribal Forest Protection Act Amendments of 2024. S-465 was introduced by Senators Cortez Masto and Hoven. The bill would address critical public safety needs in Indian country by improving tools for recruitment and retention of BIA law enforcement. It increases the effectiveness of federal missing persons resources and provides more resources to coordinate state tribal responses to the missing and murdered indigenous women crisis. S-2908 was introduced by Senator Heinrich and Senator Mullen. The bill would improve the capacity of tribes and tribal organizations to manage buffalo and habitat for cultural subsistence and economic development purposes. S-4370 was introduced by Vice Chair Murkowski. The bill will amend the Tribal Forest Protection Act to make additional lands in Alaska and in the lower 48 eligible for 638 contracting uh, of the U.S. Forest Service management functions such as forest disease and fire mitigation. I'll now turn to the Vice Chair for her opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll be brief, as you've mentioned, the, the three bills on the agenda. I want to just speak very quickly to my bill, S-4370. This is the Tribal Forest Protection Act Amendments of 2024. We're seeking to improve the TFPA <coughs> so that it can more effectively address catastrophic wildfire, insect outbreaks, and other threats to Indian forests and rangelands. We eliminate the requirement that these Indian <coughs> forests and rangelands border or lie adjacent to BLM or Forest Service lands. Um, we, we know the vulnerability that our forests and our rangelands are, are facing. There's no boundaries to these fires. Um, so this is important. And we also address uh, or uh, provide a critical fix to TFPA, which currently omits lands that are owned by Alaska Native Village and Regional Corps. Uh, we refer to them as ANCs. Without this fix, the ANCs, which own more than 44 million acres of land in Alaska, are, are practically excluded from participation under the TFPA statute, which shouldn't be acceptable to any of us. So uh, we all know we've got a unique legal framework in Alaska that governors, governs Alaska Native communities and, uh, and ANCSA, but we don't want to be disadvantaged by that. So that's what the first bill does. Uh, S-2908, the Indian Buffalo Management, Buffalo Management Act, would make permanent a small but impactful program operated by BIA for rebuilding buffalo populations on tribal lands. This first came to my attention uh, through Congress, former Congressman Young because of the Buffalo connections uh, to Alaska. We have two Alaska Native communities. One is Old Harbor, the other is Stevens Village. They manage herds of about 500 buffalo. Uh, they provide food, security, job opportunities, and really a great source of pride. Enacting S-2908 would help cover the cost of transporting the cows, calves, and bulls from the lower 48 to Alaska to promote their economic development goals and build up an essential food source. Uh, as far as S-465, the Badges Act, I appreciate my friend uh, Catherine Cortez Masto for continuing her work to ensure the safety in Native communities and supporting coordination efforts related to mur murdered, missing, and, and sexual assault cases. And, and I want to thank her office and Senator Hoven for working with our team to strengthen the background check provisions. So got a lot of work to do there, but I appreciate the good work of all in the committee. Thank you, Vice Chair. Are there any other senators wishing to make an opening statement? Senator Cortez Masto. Thank you, Chairman uh, Schatz and our Vice Chairman uh, Murkowski for including the badges for Native Communities Act, S-465, in today's markup. And I also want to thank Senator Hoven for partnering with me on this important legislation. For too long, uh, poor coordination, limited data, and unacceptable lack of federal re resources have resulted in enormous barriers to justice all across Indian country. The badges for Native Communities Act makes a number of common sense fixes that will improve federal and tribal law enforcement's response to crime in order for our law enforcement officers to combat violence and solve cases of missing and murdered indigenous women and girls, we must improve our ability to recruit and retain high quality officers and give them the tools they need to do their jobs. This bipartisan bill will allow the Bureau of Indian Affairs to conduct their own background checks when hiring BIA law enforcement officers, which should significantly decrease the time between when an officer is offered a job and when they are formally hired. The BIA and tribes across the U.S. have told us how much this simple change could improve the recruitment of public safety officers in Indian country. 
This bill will also help this committee evaluate the staff that federal law enforcement dictates, um, dedicates, excuse me, to respond to violence and bolster tribal access to the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System. Additionally, it will establish a grant program to help increase coordination between states, tribes, and nonprofits to improve response to MMIP and sexual assault cases. Senator Nehoven and I have submitted an amendment uh, for the committee's consideration that would make some technical changes uh, recommended, as you've heard uh, the ranking member say. The amendment ensures the effectiveness of the background check. I thank her for her work as well in all of this. And I thank the committee staff for their work, and I look forward to advancing this bill. Thank you. Senator Hoven. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I just want to express my appreciation to uh, Senator Cortez Masto for introducing the Badges Act. Uh, I think uh, in the Upper Great Plains, for example, we have something like 50% vacancy in BIA law enforcement officers. So it's really important we find ways to get more law enforcement personnel in these positions. And the, and the Badges Act will help do that. So uh, again, I'm pleased to co-sponsor with you. And uh, obviously ask for the, the committee's support, but uh, so important that we get these uh, positions filled in Indian country to uh, protect uh, women, children, and frankly, everybody uh, in Indian country. So thank you. If there are no further remarks or opening statements, we'll move to the, uh, uh, the uh, bills. Uh, and without objection, I call up S-465, Senator Cortez Masto, and Senator Hoven filed a timely amendment in the nature of a substitute number KAT24635. And I'll now recognize, uh, oh, actually, Senator Cortez Masso has already described her amendment. Um, so we'll just move on to, is there any discussion? Hearing none and without objection, the committee will vote on amendment number KAT24635. Those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it and the ANS is adopted. If there is no further debate, then without objection, the committee will uh, vote to report S465 as amended. Those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it and S465 is ordered reported with an amendment in the nature of a substitute. I now call up S2908. Vice Chair Murkowski filed a timely amendment on behalf of Senators Heinrich uh, and herself, number KAT24650, and I'll now recognize uh, the Vice Chair to describe the amendment. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a, uh, excuse me. Purpose of the amendment is to ensure that mobile meat processing trailers will be covered by the grants authorized by S2908 for bison management. I would also revise the definition of tribal organization in S2908 to conform to the text of the House reported companion bill. Um, what we're trying to do is promote the production of buffalo in order to meet tribal subsistence needs. So I would urge colleagues to support the amendment. Any other discussion? Hearing none, without objection, the committee will vote on amendment number KAT24650. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. The ayes have it and the amendment is adopted. If there is no further debate, then without objection, the committee will vote to report S2908 as amendment. Those as amended, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. And the ayes have it and S2908 is ordered reported with an amendment. And lastly today, without objection, I call up S4370, Vice Chair Murkowski, timely filed amendment number RYA24530, and I'll now recognize the Vice Chair to describe the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is pretty technical in nature. Um, we have introduced this amendment to the existing definition of Indian forest land and rangeland to add ANCSA lands in Alaska to the TFPA statute. Uh, it really is, is just meant to clarify that ANCSA lands, um, in the definition, uh, we do not change the substance of the bill. We seek to ensure that Alaska Native corporations who own and manage forested lands in the state can carry out the TFPA projects. I would ask for support. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Uh, hearing none and without objection, the committee will vote on amendment number RYA24530. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it and the amendment is adopted. And if there is no further debate, then without objection, the committee will uh, vote to report S4370 as amended. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it and S430 
4370 is ordered reported with an amendment. I want to thank the members for getting the business of our committee completed expeditiously today, and I ask unanimous consent that the staff be allowed to make technical and conforming changes. There being no objections or further business before the committee, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>